Yeah, tell me something. Why are you here? Get down! Bang, bang, bang. After the segment, man. You gotta remind me to turn it on after the segment. Hey, yo, what's going on, everybody? How you doing? My name is Hero. This is Coding with Strangers. I'm really happy to see you. Sorry about the last, the last video. I hadn't shut off my computer in a few weeks. And uh, my frame rate and all my programs were chugging at negative zero. So I appreciate you guys bearing with me on that and not not letting it get too too effective. But I want to talk about something near and dear to my heart. I work in healthcare. I've worked in healthcare for about 13 years. When I decided to lie on my resume to get the job that I currently have in tech, I did it knowing that sick people will always be available. It's a, it's a harsh way of thinking of reality, but my job is always guaranteed because people are always going to be sick. The more important part is, I truly value seeing people at their best. So when sick people leave my care, my my favorite thing to do is wish they never see me again. I never want to see your sorry sack of a human compository body of bone and flesh ever again. I make them swear on their life if they ever see me outside that they don't walk up to me. They don't try and shake my hand. They don't try and sing my praises and tell whoever loved person around them, this is the person who saved my life. No, shut up. You, we make eye contact. You give me a heads up. I give you a head nod. And we go about our day. You're not even done paying your bills for the surgery I did on you. You don't owe me a goddamn thing, okay? But I have to do that because it's important for people to understand how important it is when you get a second chance to make the most of it. And not spend your time trying to pay back the gratitude. Go pay it forward. Stop paying people in the past. My check is guaranteed. I'm getting paid on the first every every month. It don't matter. <laughs> I could save one person. I could save a thousand. I prefer to save a thousand. But it's getting harder for me to do my job. And this hits hard at home because as the only healthcare provider on my floor who knows how to set up a Teams meeting, it is becoming quite apparent that the world of healthcare and the world of technology aren't meshing very well. And it stands the reason why they're not meshing is in large part because the healthcare money and financial blow up and glow up from insurance companies and these profit hospitals haven't kept track with technology because it's not profitable. But a lot of these companies are finding out the hardware that may be running a Windows 95 server base to hold and house 40,000 patients information with over a trillion data points. Maybe a Windows 95 isn't the best setup you could possibly think of. But if you think our healthcare's our healthcare system is atrocious because no one has insurance in a, in this in this great old country or that you literally can't be guaranteed healthcare unless you have a job so that keeps you in the cycle. But if you think that's terrible, don't you dare for one second think your data information, your personal records are safe because I can tell you from experience it doesn't it wouldn't take someone longer than 10 minutes to gain access to a lot of these major hospitals and hackers have found it much easier than instead of sending phishing emails to just walk up to the hospital and plug a USB into any of the available PCs throughout the whole entire hospital that are just lamely sitting around aimlessly sitting around and that's how they've gained an access acquired technology to be able to do their hacks on these companies and one of the hospitals I used to work at suffered a, a hacker ransom situation and I just want to talk about it more because it's happening more and it's becoming more aggressive it's becoming more expensive and you best believe that money isn't being taken out of some prize pool the the check is going to land on you and as far as I'm concerned salt water costs one thousand two hundred dollars at our hospital so you best believe they're going to add a few, a three, where that two used to be, if it mean, if that's what it means. Because they don't fear repercussions because hospitals aren't being held to a higher standard. Let's, let's get into what we're talking about today, shall we? Electronic health records go back online at Wisconsin's Ascension Hospital. Ransomware attack in May forced Ascension Hospital to go offline while staff felt tired and stressed. Union leaders say. Now, they felt a lot more than that. 
Electronic health records at the healthcare company Ascension are back online at Wisconsin Hospital about a month after cyber attack forced the company to go offline. A company spokesperson said Monday the spokesperson told WPR most hospital departments, physicians' offices, and clinics may now use electronic documentation charting and other systems so for all you guys who don't know the electronic health records and a few other systems such as epic and you know and there's a there's a plethora of them but think of them as uis or ides where patient information from all of the machines that are hooked up on a patient can be charted in automatically now back in the day and even till today there's emergency protocol for charting on paper but as you could imagine the more technology and more data points in one minute a cardiac health patient can have over 7,000 data points at any given second. At any given second, we could do beats per minute, half beats per minute, half beats per seconds. Uh, we could do total blood volume per second. We could do a plethora of things and even smaller de de denominations of time in order to get the best picture of what a patient is able to handle and stand during a procedure. And you would want you want and need all of this information. It's pertinent to different parties involved, and it's the ultimate since the it's, it's since the adventation of of these technologies. Patient care has exponentially improved because of our ability to acquire more information about how to take care of our patients. I remember when I was training on the Drager to learn how to teach how to breathe for patients who weren't capable of breathing for themselves, and after so many pumps, I learned on a system where I had to manually keep the pump with my hand and keep a visualization knowing every four seconds I have to breathe for this person. So now I can chart the rate and make the machine do it on its own. So I have both my hands to do other things, which made it easier for me to manage my assistants and stuff like that. So there's a great deal of power in healthcare goes into this because now the physician, the healthcare provider, the nurse, therapist, whoever, isn't fiddling with a machine and focused on the patient, which is what you really want. A union leader at Ascension St. Francis Hospital in Milwaukee recently told WPR Wisconsin Today what was what it was like for the hospital staff members at the State 17 Ascension facility to go back to pen and paper in the weeks after the May 8th cyber attack. Damn, they was out there for since May 8th. Ah, damn. For a lot of our nurses, they never paper charted at all. That's a, whew, that's a, that's a banger of a line because you're absolutely right. All of our students and all of the newbies come in with iPads. Literally, you're issued an iPad. We, we don't get. I have. I still have my pager because I'm on emergency emergency like call like if there was ever like a traumatic event where they needed access to us and power lines went down so i have my pager but all of them are they all get issued an ipad or a, a windows tablet and my thing my, i have a rule that you can't save the patient typing notes or looking through your notes so i like they're not allowed to use their their notes on my their tablet on my floor unless we're doing rounds man that it it didn't even dawn on me that this is a thing because I learned how to paper chart. But to be honest, if I had to do it, I, if I had to do it now, I could. But it'd be a drag. Said Connie Smith, a charge capture coordinator and head of Wisconsin Federation of Nurses and Health Professionals. We were using formats that we pulled out of drawers. Damn, that hadn't seen light of day in a long time. May 8th CyberTab took down various electronic systems and records for about 140 Ascension hospitals nationwide. The company restored systems in Wisconsin over the weekend and has promised to restore access to those systems nationwide by Friday. The outage led to a longer wait time, concerns of patient missing appointment. Smith worked in surgery department at Ascension St. Francis Hospital. She says staff at every level of the hospital felt the disruption and were tired and stressed. This is this is tough because there were people who were assigned to have surgery that morning when the systems went down and no one could log them in, no one could track them, no one we couldn't confirm their blood sugars or their tests with the labs. You don't know how important communication is through electronic health records until you're trying to see if your diabetic patient blood sugar is low enough to actually do the surgery and no one can get the test results from the lab because the lab can't pull can't can't pull the person's name up 
because everyone has a patient ID number. So we don't use names because that's how we protect people's information. So you're looking for this person's name and his name's John Smith. We have over 600 John Smiths and no one knows what his identification. This was, this was a nightmare for us on so many levels because the security measures that went into place to keeping people's information safe actively made it harder to identify people. It did its job so well, we couldn't do ours. It's been a tough challenge from our outpatient department to our independent in the patient departments, our emergency rooms, even down to our cleaning staff and our kitchen workers, she said. Damn, that way, the way we use the electronic records to get people dinner, lunch, and breakfast, this is true, and to get our room tidied up and cleaned after surgery, this is also true. After somebody left, uh, get our room clean after someone left all goes through our medical records let's talk about the repercussions ascension and others face class action lawsuit after attack in recent years hospital systems nationwide have faced large-scale lawsuits following cyber attacks at least six class action lawsuits were filed against change healthcare following a cyber attack in february last year hca healthcare workers was subject to a class action lawsuit after a breach that could have affected up to 11 million patients. Since the ransomware attack of May 8th, at least two class action lawsuits have been filed against Ascension. The lawsuits claim the company failed to safeguard personal identity information and protect health information. Ascension is said has said it's investigating if the hackers accessed patient data. The fuck you mean if, if they did? It's too... They took it away from you. If What do you mean did they access it? They stopped you from accessing it. We are conducting a thorough investigation. Oh, these hospitals are fucking animals, man. We have in oh, the thorough investigation of the incident with the support of leading cybersecurity experts who all, for the record, just say pay the ransomware. There's no way to stop them. Pay the ransomware, gain access to it, and then let us safeguard your system. Because... When someone knows how to get it, and it's relatively easy. I didn't realize how easy it is to hack some things. I thought they were doing the shit from the Matrix. No, these people are, are literally adding zeros to a, a, line, a line of code, and it's just literally messing everything up for them. Ascension spokesperson told WPR on Monday, if we determine sensitive data was potentially exfiltrated or accessed, we will notify, the support, notify and support the affected individuals in accordance with all rele relevant regulatory and legal obligations. So until someone says they got caught with their hand, with, until someone says they got in trouble, they're not, they're not admitting anything. Smith, the union leader, offered some criticism of how Ascension handled the matter after the attack. Com communication with staff could have been a lot better. We didn't hear stuff for days, but the reality behind it all, we need staff and Smith said, we need staff before this and we need staff now. Damn. They have been cutting back on the number of people that are in the facility and the time that they are taking to replace somebody has been so long. She con continued, one more set of hands on the first day could have changed what is happening across the board. Hmm. So, so they're already they're already cutting staff and numbers to budgets to prepare for the lawsuits. Naperish said it is unsure if Ascension should take responsibility in this attack. I wish I knew the right answer to that, but I just but just the fact that we are asking the that question gets at some of the complexity and all the inter connectedness in healthcare. The fact that we don't know who is in charge or keeping the information safe shows us why healthcare is so vulnerable. Okay, my thoughts on this are very simple. The hospitals absolutely should be held responsible. You mean to tell me we can trust these hospitals to control schedule one through three drugs? We have methadone, we have we have every upper downer drug you could imagine in the whole entire. I there are drugs in that country in that hospital that I could use to paralyze an elephant, and and we are somehow trusted to handle that. We're somehow trusted to handle that, but when it comes to controlling our data, keeping people's information safe, it's a it's a shining, it's a glaring error 
on the full body health because Ascension's motto is to take care of the mind, body, soul, and the economic health of a person. They clearly didn't. They clearly didn't acknowledge someone's personal data as being something worth protecting, and there are very harsh, harsh L's you can take. Let's look at some of the ransom attacks that have happened in the past, and that have led to a, a plethora of issues. Healthcare ransom attack led to uptick in ED visits at nearby hospital. Ransomware attack in a hospital known to disrupt daily operations often resulting in ambulance diversions and canceled appointments, but researchers later published in May Jam. So basically, when these things happen, not only are the patient's information who's in the hospital we can't process, anyone who got hurt and is trying to get into the hospital, their process is going to take longer. Ascension Hospital it makes progress, so they finished this one out. Uh, the CICSA, HSA, Warren Healthcare, Black Blaster, ransomware attack. This was from 2024 in May. This light, latest one was uh, May 28th. The FBI was unable to fulfill anything, suggested paying the ransom. Who is this? With the Lockport ransomware gang returning means for healthcare. This is from March 2020, 20, uh, March 11, 2024. The relentlessness targeting of organizations across critical infrastructures at alarming rate. Green Ridge Behavioral Health agreed to pay $40,000 and implemented corrective actions to resolve ransomware investigation. This is out uh, February 2023. So there's an exponential uptick in ransomware in hospitals. And I have two perspectives on this. One is playful. The other one's dead serious. You having a hard time finding a job? Go stick up a hospital. Go do it. They're not learning their lesson. And they're paying $40,000 a pop. You just got to be able to hold out for a week. The FBI has already confirmed they can't help these people. Stop calling us. The FBI said we can't help you. Stop calling us. GAO urges HSS to increase oversight of ransomware practices. So they, they're making budgets. They're saying, hey, we need to add this to the budget. Instead of us trying to figure out how to protect our, our, our patients better, let's just add it to the budget. U.S. fertility reaches 5.75 data breach settlement. Literally, people's information about how they were going to have kids. So people are going to fertility clinics. Could you imagine not being sure if the information you submitted to have your baby is your information? Oh, we're fine. We're, we're done for. Researchers observe increase in emerging ransomware groups targeting healthcare. And I gave you the funny one. We could all become hackers and literally do this. But in reality, this is such a painful thing to be like, because you already know they don't care. It's all about the money. It's all about the numbers. It's all about their beds. But to see the lackluster effort and the poor response and the uptick in the ransom attacks is proof that they're not getting the message. So how, how do we even begin to stop this? Because I can tell you openly, a lot of those that I've seen in the year 2015 our, our, for our Lord and, and coders, Windows 95 running on systems. I've seen it. I've seen it. And 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 this is a this is a nationwide problem that is interconnected. I've I, I know how easy it, you you can we've had people sneak into hospitals and pretend to be doctors and live there and be there for months at a time. Uh Dr. Love <laughs> I call him Dr. Love Kai, uh, Love Love Robinson, Ma 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 Love Kai Robinson, whatever from Florida. He stole over forty thousand dollars from patients, but he was able to walk around the hospital for two months undetected. And if I was a hacker, I would do the same thing. Forget sending them emails to try and get fish their information. Just go up to any computer with a with a clipboard, and no one will say a word to you. We have a code for this at our hospital. Geek Squad code. If anyone ever sends a report 
over the phone says, hey, can you call Geek Squad? We have a problem on floor seven with one of the computers. That's a, that's code for us to tell, like, yo, there's so we think someone in, who's in here is trying to hack us. If the money and the punishment, and man, this shit goes on for days. I didn't even know there was this many. It, they, they've logged everything. The DOJ can't do anything for you. How independence and pay, no, nothing. Downloaded whole system, New Jersey health system, diverts ambulance amid IT network loss. Like this is tragic. Imagine having a heart attack and not being able to get the coordinates for the hospital if they can accept you or admit you or need to be re-diverted. There's too many scary things to think about here. Uh, the And I'm not really sure if I have the answers about what to do next. For our county hospitals, those are elected officials. We can talk to our elected officials to make sure that that's up to speed. But for a vast majority of counties where they can't manage a hospital, an emergency room, those are run privately. How do we guarantee that these private companies are maintaining our information accordingly? The penalties need to be steeper. They need to be hit in such a way that it guarantees change because people's information should be held to a higher standard. It should be paramount. And we can't talk about wanting to save and help people become better overall if we can't even guarantee the protection of their safety or of their data. So I could ramble on for this, but let me know what you think. When was the last time you went to go get a checkup, guys? You know a lot of men aren't doing that. Make sure you go check in at least twice a year, okay? And dentists and eyes, do your ears too. But guys, stop asking you, your random ass mailman about the rash on your ass. Oh, 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 oh,